Hi all, it's Ziv from Elementor, and welcome to this tips and tricks tutorial, where you will learn step by step to create awesome responsive image hotspots, like the ones you see here. Adding a layer of playful UX is a great way to increase website conversion rates and really make them stand out. The cool thing is that these effects can easily be built with Elementor. It does require some out of the box thinking though, more specifically, out of the flip box thinking. Yeah, you heard that right. These mobile friendly image hotspots were built with Elementor's Flipbox widgets. As you get more experienced with Elementor, you will start thinking of different and more creative ways to use Elementor's widgets and their functionality. And sometimes you just need a little nudge in the right direction. So let's make a start. First, let's get a good understanding of what image hotspots are and how to use them. Essentially, they are pins displayed on specific areas of an image that reveal more information upon interacting with them either by clicking on or hovering over them with a cursor, for example. It's a friendly and interactive way to draw your visitor's attention and allow them to quickly view information without having to navigate to a different page. This effect can be applied in many different ways on all types of sites, but follow the same technical build process, which is what I'll show you in this tutorial. Then you can customize it according to your own design and website needs. As mentioned before, we will create the image hotspots using Elementor's Flipbox widgets. We'll also need an image widget and make sure they play nice together, especially on mobile devices. I'll go ahead and delete this column so we can start from scratch. First off, let's right click to insert a new column and drag it to the left. Next, search for and drag an image widget into the empty column. Then select an image of your choice. Now we will add the flipbox widget, so drag and drop it anywhere inside the column. As you can see, the flipbox widget has two sides. The front is the one that is actively displayed, and hovering your cursor over it triggers the back side to appear. We will customize each side to give the desirable look of our hotspots. For this design, we only need an icon in the front. I'm going with this circle, but you can choose any icon you like. Next, delete the heading and description. Then in the background tab, remove the color by dragging the opacity all the way down. Great. Now let's change the width and position it so we can see the changes better. In the advanced tab, under positioning, set the width to custom. You can skip this step if you want the width to take up 100% of the column. In this design, I'll go ahead and set it to 222 pixels. Now let's position it on top of the image widget, next to the left frame, so that when visitors hover over that area, information about the frames will be displayed. Set the position to absolute. The moment we do that, the flipbox widget is removed from the flow of elements on the page, so it doesn't take up any height in the column anymore, allowing us to position it exactly where we want, by using the horizontal and vertical offset sliders. These values determine where the flipbox widget will be positioned, in relation to the column it's in. In our case, on the image near the frame on the left. It's important to know that custom positioned elements need some tweaking to make them mobile responsive, especially if you want them to remain at specific points on an image widget behind them. If you are new to custom positioning, I highly recommend you watch our dedicated tutorials covering all the basics. I'll leave the links in the description below. Okay, so how do we make these image hotspots mobile responsive? The solution is to make sure the column, image and flipbox widgets all resize together while maintaining the aspect ratio. We'll start with the positioning of the flipbox widget. Instead of using pixels for the offsets, which is a static non-relative unit, we will use percentage, which is a relative unit. This way it will be positioned relative to the column's changing width and height on mobile devices, which will help maintain the aspect ratio. Let's see how that works. I'll go ahead and set the offset units to percentages. You can either manually drag the widget to the place you like, or use the offset sliders till you find the perfect position. Here is great for my design. Before we check it out on tablet and mobile, I'll go ahead and style the back of the flip box. Go to content, and in the back dropdown, we will add the information that will be displayed when visitors hover over the icon. I'll go ahead and type some info about the frames. 
And because we won't need a button for this design, I'll go ahead and remove it by deleting its text. You can leave it, of course, and add a link to a product, for example. Next, in background, set the color to white. Then in style, I'll make the icon size a bit smaller. Then in the back drop down, I'll set the spacing to 10 and change both the title and description's text color to black. Next, go back to content one more time and click to open the settings drop down. Here, we will edit the animation and change the height of the widget. I'll set the height to 300 pixels and choose a flip effect. You can play around with the options you see here. Then choose the one that best fits your design. I'm going with the zoom in effect. Cool. Okay, time to check it out on tablet. Let's first adjust the column's width to fit our design for tablet. Currently, both columns take up 50%. I'll go ahead and set the second column to take up 100%, so it appears under the first one. As you can see, the first column still takes up 50%, and the image fills up all of the column space. But pay attention that in this specific design, the image's orientation is portrait. So when the column's width increases, you can see that it doesn't take up all of the space anymore. If the column and the image widget don't maintain their aspect ratio upon resizing, the flipbox widget loses its place. This happens because the position of the flipbox widget is in relation to the column and not the image. Therefore, for this to work, always make sure the image takes up the full width and height of the column. Using an image in landscape will make this easier. So with that in mind, I'll slightly increase the width to suit my design, while making sure the image still takes up all of the column space. Great. Now, the only thing left to do is find a way to position this column in the center. Here's another simple trick for you. Go to the column settings, and in advanced, click on custom CSS. Here, we will set the column's margin to auto, which means it will automatically align itself to the center. First type selector, then open and close brackets, and inside type margin auto. This simple trick helps position a column within a section when it isn't set to take up 100% of the width. Okay, works perfectly. Let's check it out on mobile as well. We can see that the icon is still pretty close to its original position, but not quite in the same place. This happens because both the column and the image now resize together according to the different screen sizes, but the hotspot, although its offsets are in percentage, not yet. We can give it a custom width and height to help maintain its original position. In our case, just the height will do the trick. In settings, set the height to 150 pixels. Great. Another cool thing you can do to draw your visitors' attention and increase engagement is add motion effects to your image hotspots that are either triggered on scroll or mouse movement. Go to the advanced tab and under motion effects, toggle mouse effects to on. Then click to set the mouse track effect. I'll leave the direction to opposite, which will move the flip box in the opposite direction of the mouse movement. And I'll drag the speed to 0.3 to create a subtle effect. Okay, great. Our image hotspot is ready. Let's add a couple more. I'll go ahead and duplicate the flipbox widget. Adjust its position to fit my design. And change the motion effect to direct to make it more distinctive. Then back in content, I'll change the text. Let's do that one last time. Adjust its position. And change the text. All right, we're done. Let's see the final result. Awesome. Well, that's it. Now you know how to create responsive image hotspots that also look great on tablet 
and mobile devices. This effect can be applied in many different ways on all types of sites. So go ahead, create your own ones and customize them according to your design and website needs. Adding a layer of playful UX to your site increases conversion rates and really makes it stand out. As always, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more tips and tutorials. Ciao for now.